Hey, this is just big. <laughs> 1500 watts. And that's what it looks like. There it is, out of the box, yeah. <laughs> With 1500 watts, this is the biggest power station I've ever had in. At 1500, I can plug in, pretty much run anything I want. <laughs> the very first thing I noticed was this, it's extremely heavy. Oh man, it is heavy. But it's lithium iron phosphate batteries. There was uh, something on the internet about that, just so you guys are warned, uh, that it was lithium uh, uh, ion. It's not, it's lithium phosphate, so it's like, the lithium iron phosphate batteries are, that's the best you can have for storage right now, technically at this point in time anyways. You know. It's on sale, that's why I'm showing it today, but also want to look at the features. I'm gonna take a look at this hard, man this thing, it's heavy. That's, I think that would be my number one complaint, but you know you got something good when it's, when it's heavy. <laughs> that's how that works. The very first thing we're gonna look at, I guess would be, uh, it's the two ratings. The 1500 watts is great, but how long would that last you? Well, it'll last apparently about an hour. It's actually rated at 1548 uh, watt hours. Obviously there's uh, outputs down here uh, for plugging in. So you actually have three, three plugs. So you could run multiple things off of this. And you know, whether it be RV camping, uh, emergency power for the house, the home, the, the apartment, the condo, whatever it is, even a boat, again, you know, boat, you know, good thing to have, you know, some backup power of some sort. And this one offers some odd features, but some interesting features. I'll provide a link in the description below for where you can find this. And within 24 hours, we will probably post a discount coupon too. So you might wanna, you know, check back with us because we are going to have a sale price on this beast. The very first thing that the way they've got this laid out is the AC is right here, of course, at the front. Everything is going on at the front except the emergency lighting, which is on the back side, and we'll we'll get back to that later. But right now, all your output for AC is right here. You've got all your different USBs and right here, but you also have your USB-C outputs, which for some reason uh, VTO man put up here, which is fine. You know, it's it is what it is. Uh, you also have a cigarette lighter plug right here where you can uh, plug in your uh, gadgets that you need to, if you need to power something up through a cigarette lighter plug. And you have two of these uh, DC uh, output. These are output right here. All the input for charging this is right here. And you flip this little flap up and you'll see you have the AC for plugging into household power, but you also have DC. Now the solar power, we need to talk about that because it's 400 watt, but it's from 30 to 60 volts. So if you have a solar power package that's 12 volt, theoretically, you would not be able to just run that straight there. However, uh, I did test it yesterday, and if you have a 12 volt solar power package, which I do at 400 watts, I was able to plug into the DC side here, but I was limited to less than 200 watts coming in, which means it's gonna take about 10 to 12 hours to fully charge this beast up off of solar using their DC in, which is understandable because the other accessory that they do includes right here, which of course is your uh, cigarette lighter plug, which would go in here, and you would plug that into your car, truck, uh, RV, whatever, and you could again charge it from the cigarette lighter plug. The solar package, because it's a special uh, situation with 30 to 60 volts, which is a little bit higher than uh, you know just your average uh, solar panels, a lot of people, including myself, look at higher voltages for solar because it's more efficient to have the higher voltages. And this is a very fairly special plug. I've run into this guy before, so this is really not that new but that would plug into where your solar power comes in. And of course you'd see the red, the black, and of course you'd plug in like that. And of course it has standard about 30 amp type uh, solar connectors here for running into a solar package if, if, you know, if you want to, and of course I want to, I mean, that's, that's the way I would charge it up. That would be the fastest. At 400 watts, or I think the rating and again, it would vary depending on the you know cloudy conditions and whatever. You're probably still looking at about six hours to uh, run at 400 watts at a higher voltage and bring it in. You might get away with less than that, or it might take longer. And again, it depends because 
Uh, we had a sort of a semi cloudy day the other day and this thing was, I was testing and timing this and it ran up to about 10 hours, but we had miserable conditions as far as, you know, there was like clouds on and off throughout the day. And I was only using the DC input, which limits you to about 125 watts, roughly maximum. So it's not gonna allow in, you know, the full 200 watt spectrum of your solar package or something like that. If you're using something portable, something like that even. So if you really do want to go portable, I would highly recommend that if you're going to do that, look at the 400 watt package because that's going to give your fastest recharge time. Uh, as a standby or emergency power for the home or something even, it's still great. You'd have at least depending on how much power you're using. If you're using 500 watts, you would get like three hours out of this. If you're too using only 200 watts to run your TV and a couple things, you know, during emergency knockout, you would you could extend yourself into eight and, you know, 10 hours out of this sort of thing. So it really depends on how much, you know, power you're using. Uh, I used this the other day as an experiment and I plugged my, I have a portable air conditioner in here and the same thing. I ran the portable air conditioner off of this for actually got two hours and there's something else I got to mention here too. Uh, it's said, and we're going to test this out. It's said that we can technically, uh, I guess we'll call it daisy chain. We could actually interlink these together. So you could have more than one. So that one, so you sort of like double the capacity of what you can have. So having multiple uh, VTO man, you know, uh, these packed together, you would actually, you could extend the time. So you'd have a lot longer, you know, you could double your range, triple your range, depending on, of course, you know, affordability is a big thing here, but how many of these things you have kicking around. Uh, the next thing I wanted to do is I want to go over the specifications with you because there may be some confusion as to what I just talked about and I just wanted to get that out of the way. The other thing they've got here is a car jumper right here and you can order separately, I think it's about $30, a car jumper kit that will plug in right here and it'll allow you to jump the battery on the car to boost the car for uh, starting it up. Let's look at the specifications on this monster. I'm gonna, oh, you gonna push that out of the way, yeah. Yeah, the particular model I have today is the PB58, which is, of course, the flash speed 1500. The battery capacity is at 1,548 watt hours. So that's why I say about 1,500 watts for an hour. And you can do the math. If you're 500 watts, it would be three times that. It would be three hours, whatever. So. Yeah, you know, you, you can get some pretty good life out of uh, this and you're not gonna hurt it because battery type is a lithium phos uh, iron phosphate battery, which they can handle going all the way down to almost pretty much zero, you know, and you're not gonna hurt the battery and it can, it can have like, you know, 10 years of life plus and also this can be recharged, you know, 5,000 times or something. So it's really, it's, it's the best thing you're gonna want in a power station is that is that. Now, AC input, and that's what really throws me off is when you plug it into household power, it's gonna draw up to 1500 watts maximum in order to recharge itself. And of course, it's gonna recharge really quickly using household power, but I'm not into that. I'm into using uh, solar power is really my big thing. But the next thing, of course, is the DC input. Now, that's at 12 volts, 10 amps, rated at 120 volts. And this is where I plugged my solar in. Uh, I tried a couple different uh, arrangements with solar to see what I could do, but really at 12 volts off the solar package, it's gonna take about 10 hours to recharge, roughly. It says six to 10, but you know, give it, give it the full 10 hours anyways, just to top it off. Uh, the Anderson connection, which I showed you, which is that uh, black and red connector, is at 400 watts, but look at the voltage, 30 to 60 volts. So you're gonna need a 400 watt panel that's rated between 30 to 60 volt output. And they are available, you can find them, or uh, series up uh, four panels or something like that, you know, and raise the voltage on, on some panels in order to, you know, get up high enough to get this uh, range so you can actually charge this. You it can be done, it's, you know, no question there. Uh, the next thing is the AC output, which, is 1500 watt but it has a peak of 3000 watts so if you're starting something big up like a like say a table saw you know or refrigerator a lot of times they surge a little bit and this thing can handle that surge and then keep it running because once you get a couple seconds past the surge of startup on a motor you'll it'll drop to its run speed which might be you know below 1500 watts even but that's so that's perfect. I mean, that is absolutely great for any kind of heavy tooling, that sort of thing. And it's of course pure sine wave. So we'll go down to the next item. The car charger, which again, 12, 10 amp, you know, this is something that uh, 
just it's with the package. Uh, USB uh, outputs, USB A, also USB C, and they're rated from five, you know, and three amp. They're, this is all typical ratings for these this type of USB systems for charging your laptop, your phone, or whatever you have you. And just imagine, you know, you could charge your phone. I don't know how many times with that much power. That would be kind of crazy. Operating temperature. Uh, is in, uh, well, because we're in the U.S., we're going to talk minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. So, yeah, you almost don't want to live in Texas right now. You're pretty close to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah bad, huh? Uh, charging temperatures, uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, just above freezing is best, of course, up to 131 again. Because of heat, you know, it needs to be in that range. And uh, dimensional product, I'm not even going to look at that. Just say 15 by whatever. Yeah, it's it's fairly bulky. And look at the uh, poundage on this thing. 41 pounds. Like I said, she's heavy. So one of the uh, strongest things, I recharge this with solar. I will not, like I said, I don't want to use the house or the, the grid because that's the whole, to me, this is part of the idea of getting away from the grid is, you know, using anything, including these portable power stations. And this one, uh, I'm going to turn it on. And it's at, let's see if we can get her going. Uh, turn the AC on. There we go. And this is my air conditioner. It's a portable air conditioner for uh, the garage. And I want to be able to run it off of a station where I run the AC for a few hours a day or something. And I can just put this back on solar. And the days that I'm not using the AC or the garage, I can have this charged up fully. So right now we're going to hit the, are we ready? Here goes the power. Bang. Oh yeah, boom, yep, and she's blowing, blowing cold air immediately, almost immediately. Yep, starting right up. Now, wattage-wise, I think this is rated for about 900 watt, and so right now, it's just coming up to around 570, you know, it's close to 600 watts. We ran this uh, the other day in here for a test for this machine and found that this ran for a couple of hours before this got what I consider to be uh, low and I wasn't sure how low I could go at the time but apparently you could run this down to almost zero without hurting it so hey that's that's a good thing that's another nice reason to have a power station uh, we're at 600 watts and climbing a little bit so and we've got cold air blowing into the shop now so handy and when I finish here I'll take this out to my solar package plug it in and charge this back up on solar win-win yeah Okay, man, I like to I like to just leave that running right now. That feels pretty good in here. <laughs> right, we're back over to the bench. So on the top of this, there's a great little uh, storage area where you can uh, all these cables that come with it. This is really cool. It comes with the AC cable. It can plug in the front to, like I said, charge off the house. I'm kind of against that because uh, I like to run solar. I, I like I like free energy. <laughs> Also comes with USB uh, C to USB C and of course USB C to USB A cables, so you can uh, run those. And also you get this uh, cigarette lighter charger, which I used for my actually off my the smaller solar system, uh, the 200 water, in order to charge this up. You can put all that in the top, so that is actually everybody should have that so all the cables can be held in here instead of you know somewhere else we ran the ac for about a half hour or so in here so we're down to something like 83 percent or whatever charge so i can take this back out to my solar now and charge it right back up to 100 percent and have it ready to go for the next time i want to run the ac in here i like it uh efficiency wise you're looking at about 85 percent roughly one of the things you have to remember is if you're making ac for example you're running an inverter inside this machine so that's costing you you may not see the cost but it's there you know and also don't leave the ac running all, all by its lonesome it will eventually i would think run this down because it does draw now theoretically they say after i think it's eight hours if there's been no load nothing has happened here it will shut itself down so that it conserves some of the energy, which is, again, cool. There's a lot of great little features. Uh, v Vito Man uh, put a lot of interesting things in here. Uh, one of the things it doesn't have, which some of the other power stations have always had, is the little timer thing, where it tells you how long it can sustain a certain load for a certain amount of time or something, and it calculates it and gives you a reading. I do like that feature. This one doesn't have it, but it's at a great price for what it is because let's face it, uh, a hundred amp hour battery right now is well between, you know, uh, what, $350, $400 or something just for a cheap one. 
and what you have here is technically more than that you have uh you know over 1500 watt watt hour battery built into this power station with an inverter all the charging you're going to need for charging cell phone for running running things so it's a full package that's really nice that's the only, and it has two handles. Yeah, one dumb guy on this end, the other dumb guy on that end to carry this thing. I saved the I saved the best till last. Uh, this is the uh, car jumper, which, like I said, you'd have to order that. But I also noticed they have this jumper here, which is to tie and daisy chain these together. So you could add a battery here to double, you know, the uh, capacity of the system right here. And the plug is right there. I don't have cables. They didn't supply cables for that, unfortunately. So we can't. I was going to do something with this today and try it, experiment. I was like, I, I can't. I don't have a cable for it. Uh, the other thing I guess I better mention too is this Anderson cable like I got right here. This came with one of my solar packages. So this does not come with the Veto Man when you ordered or something. This is just something that uh, came with uh, some solar panels. That uh, again, Vito Man has a full range of solar packages of uh, uh, panels that you can buy that would have this uh, plug on it for you. Uh, real quick on the charging thing, it's in the manual here. Uh, the wall outlet charger supposedly will charge this fully up in about an hour. So, for emergency power, you could have this plugged into the home, and if the power goes off, you have this huge, you know, <laughs> 1500 watt machine ready to go. So, that's a cool thing. Uh, the car outlet, they're saying 12 to 14 hours on the uh, cigarette lighter plug. I was able to charge this in about 10 hours. So that's pretty, yeah, there's some flexibility going on there. Same with the uh, the wattage. Now, the 400 watt solar panel system, they're saying anywhere from four to eight hours, which is quite a spread. Uh, I was unable to test it at this time because I would have to change the way my solar panels are laid out to get the 400 watts in order to see how we do but uh, between four and eight hours that's quite a bit of spread and I understand that because solar you know the, the sun's moving all day long so you're never really getting the exact same amount of output anyway so you know I, I'm fine with that so this is the upgraded model from some of the older uh, Vito Man power uh, stations this one here has got uh, some of the best features I guess that they found in the industry so far and I'm really I'm impressed and I'm really shocked about the 3000 watt surge because it just allows me, as I pointed out, you can run, I can run anything in my tools here, any power tool, even my table saw will run off of this guy. That is, that is just awesome because if you were building a house out in the woods and you didn't have power around or something like that and you brought this with you, my, wow, you'd have all the power you need to run all the power tools you want. That's, that's freaking awesome. So let's gather some thoughts on this. Uh, who is this for? Well, everybody. I mean, if you want emergency power, portable power, and you want to be able to run power tools or any kind of situation where you need to run something a little heavy even, this is really going to be your answer. Also, when I was checking on site, uh, Vito Man, uh, some of their solar panel packages and stuff were sold out. So there's uh, quite a good demand for the Vito Man uh, stuff, you know. So it's like, it, it must be a pretty good product. And this here is, oh, there was one other, yeah, this here. This is one other thing that I didn't mention and I wasn't going to even bother showing, but I ah, just turned it around. <laughs> There's a nice light on the back of this. Yeah, and it has the three, you know, uh, you can do glow lighting or whatever. You can also do the flash and the SOS and everything else with this as well. But I'm not even going to turn it on because there's just, I don't think there's any point to this. This is something on a power station for me that's just, um, I just don't need it. There's probably campers that would need it, that sort of thing, but beyond that, my my whole interest right here is is that 3,000 peak watts of power coming out of here with a 1,500 watts to load, and it's actually better than a 100 amp hour battery if you do the math. It's like you've got more power here than, than they've got, you know. And the control package for the solar is, is built in. The inverter is built. Everything's here. It's it's a power station. It has all of the above, you know. Just think, I could run my coffee machine off of this guy. <laughs> Okay, somebody asked about fan noise. Uh, when the cooling fan runs, it will hit about 70 dB. So it's, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. Thank you for watching Coffee and Tools. Please like, share, subscribe, and ring the notice bell. <laughs> we give stuff away on the show too. So yeah, there's prizes to be won. I'm gonna get out of here. Yesterday it was 110 degrees outside. Yeah, in Southern Texas. Wow. I'm gone. Okay, over and out. <laughs>